There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the fermentation of glucose to ethanol. We also talked about the chemical reaction that is involved, and we wrote the chemical equation, the balanced chemical equation for that reaction. So in this one, this video, we're going to cover the next top point, which is also about ethanol. And it says, outline the use of ethanol as a fuel and explain why it can be called a renewable resource. So down here, I've got two pictures. This here is a cornfield. And they actually often use corn to make ethanol. So this is a cornfield. And as you can see, we have to grow quite a bit of corn. And then we can use that corn to make ethanol. And down here, we actually have a corn uh, plant. And there's two parts to that corn plant. There's the sugary part, that's the sugar part, so that's what we can actually eat. Or there is the leafy part, which is more or less just cellulose. And we can make ethanol from both of those, but because there's much more sugar than cellulose in the plant, the majority, uh, quite a bit of our ethanol comes from that sugar part, so this part but we might also be able to make ethanol from the waste. So this is often considered the, the waste of corn waste. So it's corn waste because we can use that part here for other things, for the sugary part, but that cellulose part, we can't really use for anything else. So that's the corn waste. We could theoretically use, use both, but often we, at the moment, we're focusing on using sugar for ethanol, so that sugar part. It says outline the use of ethanol. So before we start, we got to make sure we know, know how actually ethanol gets produced as well. So something called photosynthesis. And photosynthesis, photosynthesis, um, uses carbon dioxide, the energy from the sun, and also water as well to grow sugar or to build sugar, and that sugar is in that corn. And we also need to have fertilizers as well. So these fertilizers and pesticides are used to um, help it grow, to so help it grow, plus to remove pests as well. So the pesticides remove pests and the fertilizers help it to grow. So we need to have energy from the sun, we need to have water, we need to have carbon dioxide, and all that, plus fertilizers and pesticides, help us to grow corn at an effective rate. Now that corn, we can then ferment. So if you ferment the corn, we go from corn to 10 to 12% ethanol. So the rest of those percent, so the rest is still water. The rest is water. If we want to make sure it's a higher blend, like more ethanol, what we can do is we can use the distillation process distillation and when we use distillation we go from 10 to 20 10 to 12 percent to 97 to 100 percent so now we have no, no very little water left here so little water now the problem with cars is they can often not use that 100 percent ethanol blend because it might damage their actual engines so what they do is they actually make a blend which is 10 percent ethanol this is in Australia especially, so you might see that at your petrol station. 10% ethanol, and the rest is still from petros, petroleum, so 90% is called unleaded. So unleaded is petrol from, from fossil fuels. So those blends are the most common, so only about 10% of it is ethanol, the rest is petrol. That has to be delivered to our cars, so usually in a transport vehicle, one of those trucks. And the car burns it, and when it, when it combusts, it releases CO2. And that means that whole cycle can start again. So once the CO2 is released from the car combustion, that CO2 is used again for photosynthesis, and new corn is made. So you can think of it as maybe it's completely clean. There's, uh, there's no, no CO2 emission because it's recycled. And that would be logical to think that because you can see that how that CO2 gets produced here by the combustion, but then it's used again by the corn, so it's a cycle. 
But the problem is there is, so I wrote no CO2 emission, which is wrong. And the reason why is because to make fertilizers, we have to uh, use petrol. It comes from petroleum, so that releases some CO2. Um, fermentation requires a bit of energy and releases some CO2. Um, distillation, again, that requires energy, releases some CO2. And transport, to transport it to certain places in a, in a truck, also requires some energy, which releases some CO2. So overall, it's, it's, it is cleaner. So I'm going to write um, cleaner cleaner source of fuel. It's cleaner than petrol, but it has not zero emissions. There is some emissions. So we've got some from transport, some from distillation, some from fermentation. So even though it's cleaner, it's not zero. It is not zero. So it's important to remember. Right? So it's a cleaner source of fuel, but it's not a zero emissions. There's some um, pollution as well. Now it says outline the use of ethanol. At the moment, not many countries use it. So Brazil has a pretty big ethanol industry. Brazil uses it quite a bit. But because some reasons such as it's still very expensive, so expensive, um, we have to use a lot of land that we could use for farming. So if you plant these um, crops for ethanol, we don't make them for farming, for food purposes. So it uses land. And if we want to use, so we use 10% ethanol in our cars. If we wanted to use higher blends, maybe 50% ethanol, 50% 50 petrol, we would also have to change our engines. Our engines can't really um, handle that much ethanol. It can handle 10%, but if we add more of it, we have to change our engines. So overall, the use itself at the moment is limited. Even though some countries do produce it, um, it's still limited. And the reason why is because it uses land, which we could use for farming. It's too expensive compared to normal petrol. And we can't handle a blend that is more than 10%. Otherwise, we have to change our engines, right? These are some of the reasons why. But there's a couple of things that are on the uh, horizon, which means they might come soon. So we might be uh, more effective, more effective at using corn waste. And if we are, then we can make more ethanol from things that we don't really need. So this was the corn waste, these leaves here. So if we can make more ethanol from that, we're not going to waste our farmland because we can actually grow food and use that sugar for food, but use that corn waste for ethanol. That might be even, even better. And we might be able to use maybe even food, like those food, not food chips, sorry, wood chips. So these are things that we just um, create when we're creating furniture or other things. These food chips are usually waste, but we could you make those food chips into ethanol as well and thereby use waste to make fuel. And these are our things that we might use more and more in the future, but at the moment they're not being used to the fullest extent. So outline the use of ethanol as a fuel and explain why it can be called a reno renewable resource. So it's being used to a, a okay degree and because it's a cleaner source of fuel and it's also renewable. The reason why it's renewable is because we can grow it. So cornfield here means we can grow it, whereas fossil fuels we can't grow. Yeah, some of the disadvantages was that it's more expensive. Um, we have to change our engine if we use more than 10% ethanol, and it uses land that we could use otherwise to grow food as well. So, hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.